Hey folks, how's it going? After clearing the level 65 weapon trial tree on Saturday, I took the opportunity to also clear the 65s for the weapon trials 1 and 2. Let's start with the mage down here, because this one was pretty fun. And honestly, I was not expecting Edda to be this damn good. So what does the magician do? Great. When receiving melee attacks, cuts the damage received in half and he's immune to the effects of stigmata tiles. Of course he would. He applies this debuff by himself. On top of this, he also has the usual uh, damage over time, teleportation, knockback, interruption, immunity. His normal attack, Dust to Dust, hits a single target, dealing 45% magic damage up to 3 times and inflicting 2 stacks of stigmata. It's not listed in here, but I get the feeling this one always targets the closest possible unit. Reaction, when receiving a melee attack from the front, deals some damage, applies some stigmata, but we don't run melee units with one exception, which is never going to attack, so the reaction never comes into play. Skills-wise, just like the other boss, he goes into a rotation, with Calamitous Erosion starting first, preparing for one turn, dealing very high AoE damage, and inflicting three stacks of stigmata. This one is just a damage over time that can stack up which is why we're also bringing double healer over here, both with the weapon and the turrets that help clear debuffs. Very, very important. Skill, Abyssal Gaze, prepares for one turn and then deals AoE damage to the target with the lowest HP percentage, as well as all enemies around them. This damage can go down by 25% for each extra enemy it hits, so if it goes on one of your units, you can just bunch up and try and mitigate this, once you get into the level 50s, you should have high enough stats to help you survive this thing. Uh, if you get the weapon enhancements, you can also try and roll for some extra HP or magic defense to, again, help survive this. Otherwise, we are going to bring the training dummy and we're going to bring the Combalaria flag. Since the training dummy is also successful to the damage over time, it should be the unit with the lowest possible HP, so it should be able to tank one or two of the sets. Lastly, the gaze. At the end of the turn, locks onto three random enemies in battle, inflicts two stacks of stigmata, and changes the tile onto which they stand into stigmata realm, that lasts for three turns. This is a little bit annoying, cause you need to stay close in order to deal damage, but he makes it sort of impossible. Also, most of the fight you're just running around trying to avoid these stacks so that you don't have to bother clearing them. One little thing I was very surprised about was Edda, and the fortification skill especially, is if you put one box down, the stigmata tile no longer has effect under that box. So the first thing I'm going to do is place a box right here and let Beryl stand on it. So every single turn she can just cast Choo 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 on the boss. So we'll restart it, of course the first thing I'm gonna do is move Blade as close as possible in order to tank the triple hit. The only skill that matters on Blade is Fancy Footwork. As the boss hits for 3 times, Blade dodges 2 of those hits. Uh, the rest I am never going to touch. I guess Fleeting Hair is somewhat nice to have, he gets another 2 movement that helps him get out of the way faster, but he's fast enough already, he's got 5 speed, this is not really necessary. And there's the dodge. And there's the gaze. Now, one more thing to note before we get into the fight is the liquor. Yes, the boss normally has 150 speed, but under liquor he actually suffers a slow. This means that he moves as the last unit in a rotation instead of being the first one. This can cause some trouble every now and then, because if he starts charging the large OE and the liquor fades away, he's going to act as both the last unit of one turn and the first unit on the next one. That is not something you want to fall into. So, of course, we try and get as close as humanly possible. Again, I will want to try and use both healers to help Barrel deal a little bit of damage as well. Otherwise, she's going to be my only damage dealer in here. Uh, we summon the dummy onto one of the damage over time tiles. We need this thing to be the unit with the lowest HP on the field.
No, that's DOE. And that's us just getting the hell away from it. Again, try and clear and dispel as many stigmata stacks as possible. And that is the first AoE nuke onto the dummy. Now, once this one goes down, uh, the boss is also going to use his normal attack, uh, which is why I'm bringing Blade next to it. Again, whenever he does the normal attack, it's not written anywhere, but he hits the closest possible unit. And off we go. Now, you've noticed the liquor isn't here anymore. He's back to 150 speed, so he's going to act first. Casting another Calamitous Erosion, but this time we actually have time to get out of it. The three dummy just became available, put him down once again. Entire way is completely clear. Wait, who turned the light off? I think something got bugged. Someone turned the lights off. Sadly, the dummy didn't take them your time, so Angel was the one getting the nuke. But as long as there's two more units near her, they can tank this damage. There we go. Edda might have taken a bit too heavy a hit. And that's Blade tanking that damage. Also, as you can notice, Beryl hasn't moved from here. Beryl is never going to move from here, because the boxes actually make the tiles immune to the stigma the mark. Also, you can probably notice we just got the hell out of the way. But that's because that is one of those situations that I've told you before. Uh, the boss was at zero speed, so he was moving last in his own turn. But now that this is a new turn, he's going to move first. So he's just cast the OE, and now the OE is going down. Round 9, and nuke. I'm not gonna lie, I got caught by surprise a couple of times from this. Same thing as before, just with Samantha tanking the orbital strike. And yeah, we also try and synchronize this one with Edda's damage reduction too. Top everyone off. And since the boss has been slowed down, that means we also have a second healing turn before the nuke reaches us. Thank you. 
Uh, once more, top everyone off. I think I made a bit of a mistake here, since everyone probably should have been one tile back. But at the same time, uh, Blade's fancy footwork also gives him a 50% AoE damage reduction. So even though he's going to have to tank the triple hit from the boss, he's still going to be fine. There you go. Also, the dispels. There's another erosion, but he was slowed down. And once again, more buffings, more clears, just try and keep everyone constantly topped off. Yet another abyssal gaze. <laughs> and Beryl is still just sitting there completely chilling. <laughs> And this should be the clear. Not only this is the clear, we're also going in with the absolute disrespect and getting that clear with a healer hit. So overall, fairly easy. I think Edda made this way, way easier than it had any right to be. So let's go over the characters and gear used. First one is going to be Barrel. Uh, I had to use the Resentment Broom, even though I wasn't really dealing AoE damage. I did manage to get a couple of Focus Wands, but I didn't have the mats to actually bring these up. Still, it worked perfectly fine. Accessory doesn't really matter if you've got anything that increases uh, magic damage, it's perfectly fine. But for the gear, Justice with crit rate, crit damage and 10% magic attack. Usually I run her with the Devil. But there's nothing to kill in here, so there's no way for the devil to get stacks. Moving on, we got Blade. Uh, he's still using the sword from Meta, as well as a fancy head for the other magic defense increase. Uh, both of them with the chalices for another 15% magic damage down. Again, doesn't really take that much, but it's always useful. While for the tarot, Judgment. The boss has nothing that you can dispel, but this one still applies judgment for yet another 10% damage taken. So if anything, this is just to help buff battle a little bit. Next one is Edda, pause meteor line or some debuffs, as well as yet another reduction to range damage taken. Again, not that important, Edda doesn't retake really damage, another fancy head would have worked just fine. And lastly, another course of fortune. I really like the Wheel of Fortune buffs. This one rolled a little bit into HP, a little bit into magic defense, but still no fourth skill. Still waiting on this one. Then we got the healers, of course, Samantha, reorganized cube, extra debuff clear, fancy hat for the damage reduction, and then elegance of the Empress for yet another debuff clear. Same thing goes for Angel another reorganized cube, but lower priority compared to Samantha's. Any second item here works, if you got even more fancy hats, you could use yet another fancy hat too. And for the third one, another elegance of the Empress. Again, sadly no second skill, but the extra magic attack helps a little bit with the healing. Alright then, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck with your grind, hopefully this one helped getting you your level 10 clear, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!